Stu's going to provide information on the Australian Government Funding Project Ten Country. Oh, okay. Anyway, I'll hand over to you, Stu. I don't think I need to do any more. <laughs> All right, thanks very much. Uh, thank you, Scott. We've just decided to switch it over because um, it'll be obvious on the way through. Uh, so I just wanted to give everybody, look, we've been talking about this 10 tonne project for quite a while. I just want to give everybody a bit of an update on the sort of stuff that we've been doing um, with this project. And uh, if I'm boring you, yell out and we'll move on even faster. Um, remember, the, the whole drive for this 10 tonne project came out of our early work with our benchmarking program. And what this, what this benchmarking program highlighted to us was that certainly over, and these go for what, three years, uh, We've certainly seen that it's quite possible that over three years and these triangles are the three year averages that these achieving 10 tonnes per hectare in dry grade production is achievable um, on an average yield and there's a number of people around that are doing it. So while it might not be for everybody, we're certainly saying this is where the industry needs to focus. Um, so in working with that, one of the things that uh, we first went out and built, and we built it out of some existing work that DFA had already done, um, something that went through the numbers around the production system, the fine detail about what it costs to put posts in the ground, put grape vines in the ground, put irrigation in the ground, and what it's going to return over. And in this case, the model runs for 20 years. So we've built an online model that we can take any investor through, uh, and in the last, uh, two and a half years, I think we've taken eight investors through that model and some of them are quite significant uh, in terms of what it is. And some of them are individual family farm operators that work as well. It works at both levels. It works at five acres, it works at 50 hectares, 100 hectares, 200 hectares. Uh, it's got some useful data in it and people have been through it but found it really useful. So it's sitting there, you know anybody that wants to use it, come and have a chat with you. The other stuff that we've done with the 10-ton project, and I've just stuck the map up here, and you'll see this again, we've put together four demo sites. So up here in the corner in Merbeen, a couple here in Redcliffs, and where's the Daru gone on me? Down here. Uh, but we've got four um, demo sites that are looking at producing 10 tonnes per hectare. And the whole idea with this is that we would try and give them as much of the technology uh, and support available just to see how this, this sort of stuff works. So sitting in each of those demo sites, we've got a full weather station and an in-canopy um, environmental sensor monitoring system in there just to try and help with the management stuff, um, apart from some people that drive over them. Um, so the obvious stuff that comes out of that, soil moisture probes. And the people on the sites that we uh, have are using those soil moisture probes and know exactly where the water's moving, know exactly when it's being used and what to what depth that water's being used. Uh, this one is probably limited to um, weekly irrigations, but some of these are obviously going on daily uh, daily irrigation schedule. And you can see when water use is happening, this one's the gap of harvest, obviously. Um, so what I'm saying here is that we're pretty confident in all these sites that we're getting pretty much best practice irrigation management happening across the sites. The other stuff that's happening on these sites because of these weather stations and in canopy sensors uh, is the pest and disease model we've got going. So you see that coming through in current news for the alerts for um, uh, powder and mildew from um, Pete McGeary's website. This is the actual website. If anybody wants to have access directly to that website to see it live, uh, you can do that. It plots all of this data for whatever weather station uh, you select. And these tiny little things here, I've put a lot of data on here, they're actually when the models predict a down the mildew primary infection or a down the mildew secondary infection. This is what we're getting it from. This is the model as it runs. This thing, you can sit and watch it grow hour by hour after a rain event, um, if, if you're that curly. Um, the other stuff, and this is why it becomes fairly obvious, we've been using series imaging uh, on all of these sites to, to look at some of the information that we can start to put together on how well the crop is growing through the year, ultimately to help decide can we make better decisions throughout the year. 
Um, so, and you can start to see, you know, things through the NDPI. I won't go into this too much because Scott's going to go into detail, but you can start to pick, oh, this bit's not growing as well as this bit. Why? Um, the other thing that I just want to point out here in the technology advances pretty quickly. Uh, you can see on this side, which is this year's data compared to last year's data, it's actually starting to look really dotty. Uh, the technology's getting to the point where we're down here looking at each vine um, with this data on, and we're doing eight runs a year, but Scott will go through this in far more detail than I will. Um, the other bit that sat in our benchmarking program was the clear indication around nutrition programs. Um, when we went and looked back at what we had benchmarking data, nutrition came out as a, as a really clear driver. So what we did, all of the sites that we had in our benchmarking program, we've lined up, but we lined them up in terms of their yield in tonnes per hectare. Okay, we had a fair range. Um, the other thing that we've done is that we know just to replace, just to replace the nutrients that go out with the crop at a 10 tonne per hectare crop, you need, you need to replace a certain amount of nutrients. Anything in yellow on this, for N, P, K, calcium, magnesium, sulphur, anything in yellow is meeting that requirement. Anything in orange is under that requirement. So you start to look here, it becomes quite obvious. These are the ones that are sort of in the right ballpark. Um, once you get down here, it sort of drops away. And it's just that system feeding back on itself. Okay, so nutrition is critical. Potassium, K, okay, why is that always down? I was really, really concerned about it until Dr. Treby beat me around the head and said, hang on, you put on so much potassium at harvest time, it's not, a, it's not an issue. Um, that goes on with your wedding solution. So that's not a problem. But keep on in there, nutrition, 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 along with water, to the point where, and I know this looks horrible, but if anybody wants to use it, it's a spreadsheet that's sitting there. Over this side are the types of fertilisers. The blue bit is the percentage of N, P and K that those fertilisers hold. This bit here is how many kilos per hectare you put on of that, and it just adds it up over here and tells you whether you're meeting that 10 tonne requirement or you're below it. it. That's all it's doing, just it adds it all up for you. For people that have got a, a nutrition specialist doing all this for them, it probably all adds up. But this is just a way of checking it. So if anybody wants to use it, it's there. So where are we at with these sites? Not all of them are producing 10 tonnes um, per hectare, um, but they're getting there. So this is the data to, excuse me, last year. Um, I haven't been able to sort of deliver you guys uh, to see where they're at this, this year just yet, but certainly the uh, Redcliffe Sun Musket, I think, probably comes up. It'll be nearly 11 tonnes a hectare this year. Uh, Mervine probably comes back up to about nine for the look of it this year. Uh, I had a quick look at the um, Redcliffe Sun Low, and there's again still lots and lots there, so I would be very surprised if it didn't um, stick in the same sort of average as to where it is. So look, the sites are there, they're doing, they're doing what they need to do. We've spent a fair bit of time um, going through those sites and having visits and having a little bit of them, and we'll do that again next year if people still want to come and do it. Um, the other valuable piece uh, that, that these guys have got is Rachel helping them out with a bit of uh, bit of advice too along the way when she does a, does the inspections of each of these for us as well. Finally, the last bit, and again, uh, Scott will highlight some of this. As part of um, this project, <coughs> we've managed, thanks to John Hunt um, and um, what are they? Advanced Viticulture Technology, Burned. Uh, down in South Australia, got yield monitors on a harvester, uh, and we're actually monitoring yield on the harvester. This is the yield map for a block in Redcliffe. No, I'm not going to tell you this, but you know. Um, so it, it, it starts to point out where yield is above average and below average. It's not a discrete measure. It's not six and a half and seven tons. It's plus or minus 20% from average. 
So that's what this sort of data is saying to tell us. Scott will take us through a little bit, uh, a bit more. Um, and Stephen, are you here? Yeah. Well, there you are. Thanks, mate. Stephen and Malcolm have actually put together one on their harvester. Operates a little bit differently, but it does a similar thing. Um, and we, 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 we want to start playing with that data. Um, all right, I'm kind of leaving the 10-ton project and I'm sticking something else in here. The other bit of work that we've been working on is this mechanical pruner. So taking the stuff that Tony Martin um, had developed in terms of uh, a, a, a hydraulically driven padding head for trimming the cordon, we've now got this system in place. So we're looking directly over the top of the tractor, obviously. This is the cutting head sitting in here. You can just see a hydraulic motor sitting here. This parallelogram of arms moves in and out. You'll see that happening. This is actually a LiDAR camera we've got sitting here. There is the computer brains plugged in here. Um, so the idea is that the camera reads the cordon and moves the cutting head in and out to, to trim the cordon to the exact level. So this, this is, uh, ooh, how do I get this, ooh. I'm not sure I can get this camera from here, two secs. So that's the pruner. The driver is an idiot. Um, so it's actually the LiDAR camera that's moving that in and out to match the core on. Um, we're still working on the algorithm around that and the guys are up next week uh, to give it another go. Um, and admittedly this is on a dead vineyard and you see we're not getting everything just yet, but it's certainly working the way that we planned it to work and it's just a matter of we're hoping now of dialing in the algorithm that runs it. Um, it's slow at the minute. Um, you know, I was probably doing yeah, one to two k's an hour at the, at, at the max. Um, we haven't pushed the speed just yet. All right, and one other thing. One other thing. Another project. Um, some of you may have been looking at current news and seeing that we're starting to talk about things like an online spray diary. We will be getting there this year. That is certainly the plan. We want to move away from this. Um, we want to get to the point where that, the information, the, the sort of stuff that Kevin was talking about, we can get it to people quickly, they can see it, they can use it. Um, and we want to make sure the platform is the same, whether it's Sunbeam or whether it's APD. If it will be the same platform, it'll have a different look, they'll each have their own logos and they'll be separated, you know, but the platform behind it will be the same. So if you're supplying one or the other, it will be the same way you use it. Um, and honestly, anybody that's supplied wine grapes, you know exactly what's the go in here. Um, so we've got a group working to um, put all this together, just working through the project plan and um, getting that sort of sorted. We've held up a minute with, with Harvest right at the moment, um, but we're keen to get that sorted very soon, as soon as Harvest sort of uh, starts to wane. Uh, we've selected the great web platform, essentially there were two platforms available in the wine industry that we could have used. Great web seemed to us to be the most intuitive and best supported, uh, and that's why we've chosen that one to go ahead. The um, whole idea of it is you can actually put your chemical right at it live, it'll give you a bit of a, it'll give you a, an alert if it's, um, you know, too close to harvest, uh, or it doesn't mean some of the resistance management strategies. Um, it's available in real time, all of these sorts of things. There is a help desk available and training videos, and that's part of the key reason that we chose Great Web, because we could see that they provided that sort of help. Uh, and we'll be working DFA, Sunbeam, and APDF. We're working as a team to try and support everybody in terms of how we use this, getting it up and running, that sort of stuff. Um, so that's another small piece there. Uh, there's still a bit of work to be done, there'll be more coming out on that as soon as sort of harvest wanes and we'll get we'll get rolling on that to have something rolling out for this season um, on that. So that was the end of my quick presentation.